do you have a heat pump and it's now winter time? I wanted to do a video on the three biggest issues that I see heat pumps have, especially in the winter. Years ago, heat pumps were pretty useless in the winter time. When it got below 40 degrees, a lot of folks were relying on their backup heat sources. In some cases, those days haven't ended because we still see folks, even though there are higher end systems on the market, they're still going with lower end systems. And in some cases, finding a contractor that will even install some of these newer technologies is a little bit of a chore. But even with all the newer technologies and heat pumps that can now heat down way below freezing temperatures, systems that can save you energy, there are still issues that can cost you money, cause you to have performance issues in the winter time, and still make your heat pump not perform very well. So let's go through these issues. The three biggest issues I see heat pump systems have in the winter time. The first one is probably, in my opinion, the most common one, the one that I see the most, and that is low refrigerant that isn't caught until the springtime. And the reason it's not caught is if you're in the summertime and you get low refrigerant and the system's not performing like it should, you're going to know pretty quickly. You know, that system's either not going to keep up, your AC is not going to be working, or maybe you'll have something like the evaporator coil starting to freeze up as it's starving for refrigerant and things like that. But something will be wrong pretty quickly. You're going to know something ain't right. But in the wintertime, because most heat pump systems have some sort of backup heat source, a lot of folks don't even catch it until months later, until the springtime rolls around. And that's when a lot of folks are, you know, turning on their AC for the first time and now they're seeing something is wrong or they're getting their preventative maintenance done going into the summertime and it's being caught then. So they're going months at a time, low refrigerant, heat pump is struggling, but because there's a backup heat source, they don't even know it. The backup heat source is keeping the homeowner warm and they don't pick up on it. So what can you do? Obviously you can have your refrigerant checked or at bare minimum, just keep an eye on it. If you know your house seems to be getting kind of cool and then warm, that outdoor unit's struggling and then the heat you know, kicks on, the backup heat kicks on, and then all of a sudden your house is warm again. Noticing that temperature difference, that larger temperature swing there might help you notice that something's wrong. And then, you know, there's other signs as well. If you see your outdoor unit starting to create more ice on the outdoor coil more than usual, sometimes the refrigerant lines themselves can start to ice up if something is wrong, if you're getting low refrigerant, anything like that, you know, have a pro take a look, have them check those refrigerant levels, and you know, let's get that straight before your utility bill spikes. Number two, poor maintenance. And this one is also pretty common. I see folks all the time that, you know, they'll say, well, you know, I've got a system that I don't need to have it maintained. I've gone months and years without having anybody touch it and it's running just fine and I don't need maintenance on my system. And usually what I say to those folks, you know, good job. You know, you're the exception to the rule. It's very similar to the folks that say, hey, I haven't had my oil changed on my car for long periods of time and it's running just fine. Well, you're the exception. You're on borrowed time at that point, right? But if you're not having your system maintained like you should, there are things that can happen. First, obviously there's a chance of it breaking down. It's being poorly maintained. But the other thing is you are having it run inefficiently. So things like dirty coils, for example, if the airflow is not as good as it could be, you're not having that system cleaned up like you should, poor airflow can cause your utility bills to spike, very similar to the low refrigerant example that we used just a moment ago. Other things like the system going into defrost mode and the bottom of that outdoor heat pump system, you know, if it's not being cleaned out, if there's leaves and other kind of junk that's just kind of settled down in the bottom there, it could inhibit that system from being able to drain very well. And so sometimes we'll see systems that where that's not being maintained right or being cleaned out like it should, we'll see it start to collect a big block of ice towards the bottom because that coil never really gets to properly go into defrost mode and get all that ice off of there. So you'll sometimes see systems where it's just ice on the bottom, you know, the rest of the coil is fine, but as it falls in that defrost mode and that water, you know, comes down to the bottom of that unit, then it has nowhere to go because it's dirty. It's, it's not being able to, you know, drain out like it should. And then finally, we just touched on it. The number three thing that we see biggest issues with heat pumps have in the winter is defrost mode. 
we'll see heat pump systems not just because of poor maintenance, but things like a temperature sensor perhaps failing. Maybe it's not mounted in the right spot. We've seen that before uh, where systems will just not properly defrost like they should and it's not sensing that ice like it should and just simply moving that temperature sensor to a different part of the outdoor coil can sometimes make that defrost mode operate better or operate as often as it should or whatever the case is but you know the defrost mode is just something that we see from time to time folks have issues with could be something failing could be a board could be a sensor or it just simply could be you know I, i've seen systems where that temperature sensor actually fell off you know it was connected to one of the u-bends on the coil and it's just hanging in there by the wires and that system's not sensing the ice like it should you know as soon as we've gone out there you fall the end of the coil a little bit slap that sensor are on there and then all of a sudden the system goes into defrost and starts operating well again. Do you have a heat pump system trying to use it in the winter time and you keep having issues? What are those issues? I'd love to hear them. Please comment down below. Click that like button. That always helps out. And then of course, please subscribe for more heating and air tips. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.